It's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for Craig and Ryland's Magic TV Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. And we're back here with another review show right here on Magic TV. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. I think this is the episode that goes out just before Christmas. So if it is, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. And fortunately, I could not convince Ryland to dress as an elf this year. I tried. I tried hard. He said he's too old to dress up as an elf. But you look like an elf. You're little. You know, we were just watching the Santa Claus movies. You look like one of the elves in the Santa Claus. You're a kid. Yeah, like, next year, hey. next year he's going to get a brand new elf costume. We're going to have him dressed as an elf all December. Yeah, it's happening. You're going to go to all your shows dressed as an elf. <laughs> anyway, uh, if this is the Christmas episode, Merry Christmas. And thank you for supporting us here right on Magic TV. Really appreciate it. We've got four tricks, four reviews coming up this week, including one of the hottest uh, items in Magic right now. Uh, this is um, uh, Miracle One by Christian Grace and Vanishing Ink. And we're going to look at that first because everybody's asked us to review Miracle One. So before we do anything else, let's get straight into the first review. We're going to look at Miracle One. So the first trick we've got is Miracle One. I've got it over here. Miracle One by Christian Grace. Now, Christian showed me this at Magic Live. Uh, when I was over in Vegas at Magic Live, he actually showed me this. Uh, and I don't remember it very well because it was like a blur at Magic Live. But I remember thinking it was pretty good. And uh, I bought one at the time. And I've got to be honest, it's been sitting on my shelf and I haven't actually done anything with it. And then when um, yeah, Vanishing Ink announced they were releasing it, I was like, oh, I've got that. And I went to the shelf to get it. Now, the performance you're about to see was done before Ryland watched the tutorial for this. Because I wanted to see if I could fool him with this. So I didn't tell him anything at all. I was just like, hey, right, I'm going to show you a trick. I showed him this. Then afterwards, I got him to watch the tutorial. And the reason I'm telling you that is because Ryland has got very strong opinions about this trick. We're, we're kind of arguing back and forth about this. And we disagree completely. So we're going to have it out on camera. Father versus son. Ryland versus Craig. But first of all, I just want to show you that when Ryland first saw this, he had the pants fooled off him. This is the performance that Ryland saw before he watched the tutorial. Okay, right, so we're going to do something with a pack of cards. Two packs of cards, actually, a red deck and a blue deck. Now, which one would you like me to do the magic with, the red deck or the blue deck? Um, the red one. Are you sure? Yeah. We'll put the blue deck to one side. That will be the big finish, but we'll do, okay. we'll do the magic with the red deck. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So, we have here uh, a pack of 52 cards, 52 possibilities. Yeah. All they're all different. Now, I could get you to pick a card like yeah, this. Yeah. But instead, I'm just going to have you cut the deck, if you can, please. Just cut the deck. And then when you cut the deck, complete the cut. So no one could know what card you cut to. Would you agree? Yeah. I'm going to put that right there. And think about this. You could have cut to any one of these cards. But you cut to that card right there. I'm going to put it into the box. We're not going to look at that card. We'll put it there. Okay. But that is the card that you've picked. Yeah. Now we have the blue deck. There's 52 cards in the deck of cards, right? Yeah. Uh, I want you to hold your hands out like this. Okay? And that's going to represent the range of the cards. Yeah? Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run my hand back and forth like this. And any time you want to, just Stop. say... There? Are you sure? Do you want me to carry on? Carry on. Are you sure? Yeah. It's all on you. Do you want me to go that way or that way? That way. This way. I'll go slowly. Stop. There. Do you want me to carry on again? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, so if this is the range from 1 to 52, and you stopped about there, what position would that be in the deck? So that's 26. It's about 13. It's in between the two. Where would it be, right? I'm going to say 18. 18, you sure? Yeah, 18. Okay, Definitely. cool. 18? Yeah. So now, this deck's been here the whole time, right? We put it to one side at the beginning. Yeah. Take the cards out, but don't uh, yeah, t t hold them face down. Okay. Brilliant stuff. Now what I want you to do, you said to 18, right? Yeah. That was your choice. I want you to deal 17 cards face down onto the table. Out loud. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's the 18th card. Deal it yeah. face down there. Now think about this. If you'd have stopped at any of these, you would have had any of those cards. Yeah. If you'd stopped at any of these, you would have had any of these cards. No one could have predicted where you would end up. You ended up in the 18th position, which is that card right there. Turn it over, have a look at it. What have we got? The Five of Clubs. The Five of Clubs. Interesting. And do you remember... 
you cut to this card in the red deck from the very beginning. Yeah. You cut to that card. You then went down to the 18th position and you got the five of clubs. Any other position would have been a different card. Isn't it interesting that the card you cut to was the five of clubs? What? I know, right? What? So, when you watched that trick, you thought that was really cool, didn't you? Yeah. You were like, oh my gosh, I'm named, I named 18. The card was at the 18th position. Wow, that's a really cool. Very, very clean any card at any number. Now, you've now told me, having watched the tutorial, that you don't really like it too much. And I'm actually leaning towards liking it more than you. I actually quite like this. So, first of all, let's have a debate. What don't you like about this, buddy? Um, I don't think it needs... Nice and loud and clear. I don't think it needs um, two decks of cards. Okay, we're going to take these points one at a time. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, I know what you mean about the two decks of cards thing. Really, this is not an any card at any number. It's been marketed as an any card at any number. Really, it's a card at any number. Um, the first deck is there to force the card that the person's going to have. Now, Christian talks, I mean, he's a great teacher. And Christian talks on the project about different forces, some of which I've never seen before, some of which are very, very clever. And it's well worth learning just for those forces. Um, but in essence, and you do get that second deck of cards with a few extras in there to be able to do some of the handlings that Christian talks about. But you could just use the second deck with a riffle force and use it to have a, a card picked. Now, I had a handling with the quantum deck that used the second deck to have a card picked. So I understand the power of having two decks of cards. Yeah, but the quantum deck, it was blank. Yes, it was. I, I, was I was able to say, hey, this is a blank deck of cards. We're going to put that over there. This is the Which deck is we've been using all the way. Which is why you've got two decks of cards. Yes, yes. Um, but lay people won't really kind of think, oh, there's two decks of cards. I mean, that's kind of more of a magician thinking. It's like, they, are they going to question, hang on a magician, hang on a minute, the magician's got two decks of cards. That means that it's a little bit dodgy. Are you, are, or are you thinking like, it would be cleaner if there's one deck of cards because there's no reason to have a second deck in play? Yeah. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. What's your second point? Why else don't you like it? Um, there's a lot of things to remember. Like if, um, if I say one, you got to do like this, and if you say two, you got to do this, and three, you got to do this. You got to remember thirty things. You do have to remember a lot. That is very true. Uh, and and depending on the number that they name. Going back to the quantum deck, you're going to bring the quantum deck up with this with the maths. But the thing is, the maths is easy. I was going <laughs> to. You can't do that. That's like a rap battle. You can't take my arguments away from me by bringing it up first. That's not fair. I was going to say, you're right. The quantum deck, though, does have maths. But the maths is easy. You learnt it in like yeah, 10 easy. seconds. The, 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 he is right. There's a lot to remember. Now, you do get a crib. You do get a crib that you can put on your card case. I don't think we should use the crib. You don't think I should use the crib? No, I know you like to memorise everything. It, it, he has got a point in that there's. A lot of stuff to remember, depending on the number they name. You might have to do this, or you might have to do that, or you might have to do the other. Um, and and certain um, certain numbers, like the the uh, performance that I did on Ryland, that's almost a perfect outcome because I could literally just deal to the number he named. He could take the cards out of the case. He could deal down to that number. I could show that there were no other cards there, and uh, and 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 boom, very very clean. It's not always that clean. It's, it's, it's not always that clean. Uh, depending on what happens, there might need to be a move that takes place that's very similar to, if you know the Grail from Alakazam, there's a move that needs to take place at some point, depending on the numbers. Uh, there's also other stuff that happens, and there's more perfect outcomes. I don't want to get too much into that. I do agree with you. There's a lot to remember compared to a normal any card at any number. Okay, okay, fair point. But you have got a crib, and the crib can be put in the card case. And I know you don't like using cribs, but I use cribs. I haven't got the memory like you. It's a valid way to actually memorize stuff if you don't want to memorize stuff. What's your next problem? Um... And don't you dare bring up the range thing. You, you said, oh, you, 1 to 30. I know you, you earlier on you were mentioning about the range, but we'd already had that argument. Rylan was saying earlier on that, oh, you can only name 1 to 30, really. Whilst that's true, A, the quantum deck was also uh, limited by range. Yeah, but then you can go the other way. You can go the other way. With the quantum. Yes, but, but also... But you, can, you, but you say, go somewhere near the middle. Yes. Which will... Which always out. covers it, yeah. And... and 
with the quantum deck if they do name out of range one move will put you into the position whilst with this if it's out of range there's nothing really that you can do but he has got that really nice method of actually making sure that you're always in range by moving your finger back and forth and i know you did like that but also you did say that you prefer them to just name a number yeah we've, we've kind of had that discussion what happens if they didn't get um get it perfect what, if they named a number and it was out of range? Yeah. <coughs> I don't really know. I, 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 it has to be in range, really. It has to be in that 1 to 30 range. So but it has got... It and it landed here, what would you do? You know this. I'm not going to expose what you do, but that, that would be absolutely fine. It's like a dual reality thing. So would you go that from the other Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're always... It's genius thinking, actually. There's a lot of really clever thinking in this. The polarity principle is really good, which is... A way of having the deck look like there's no nothing special about it even though there is but it allows the spectator to deal and that's a really strong point the spectator deals through the cards themselves i've got another thing go on can't be examinable no no again like the quantum deck it can be <coughs> well okay you're gonna have a few people disagreeing with the quantum deck being examinable but I you know, but you and i both know it is yeah, yeah. yeah we've gone and gigged it a lot it is examinable um yeah, the, the the deck's not examinable. If they pick it up and spread through it, they're gonna they're gonna see something. It's not examinable. But I mean, it, because of the polarity principle, you've got a kind of a, a situation where it feels like they're seeing all of the deck. It doesn't yeah. feel like it 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 needs to be examined. But you are right. It it has it can't be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're grinding me up really badly here. Are there any other points? I can think of one more that you moaned at me about earlier on. What? You said there's nothing special about it. Yeah. What you said earlier on, just to remind you, is you said, this is just like, you know, let's say this plays out perfectly. This is basically an any card at any number. It's with two decks of cards. But the thing is, it's not an any card. It's not an any card at any number, it's a card at any number, but the spectator perceives it as an any card at any number. But Rylan was like, if this plays out perfectly, that's the effect on the audience. In order to justify the price the tag... What happens if they cut the wrong place? Well, again, that's covered, and I'm not going to talk about that on the tutorial, but that's covered. In fact, that's great. That section is awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, again, you brought up the Quantum Deck. With the Quantum Deck, the thing with the Quantum Deck was that every card was blank except for the card that they picked, uh, or except for the card at the position that they named. That was the thing with the Quantum Deck. It was a blank deck of cards... <coughs> Excuse me, that was the thing. Um, with this, it's a card at any number. Um, and it would have been nice to have a thing with it. And depending on the outcome, occasionally you do get a thing, but it's only occasional. It, 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 it's, again, you never know what you're going to get with this. It's going to be a different kind of outcome every single time. Um, look, I know you don't like it. I like it. I'm not going to change your mind. But I do want you to remember how you felt when you first saw that performance and you were fooled badly. Um, I think that this is... I wasn't is... really that fooled. You were. I wasn't. You were. I wasn't. You were, you were like, crying, going, no, please tell me how it works. No, I wasn't. You were. You no, were in tears. You were in tears. No, you were like Thea. Like, you were crying. You were, Daddy, please no, tell I me. I was like, what? That's what I did. I said, what? <laughs> but look... I know it, how it works. I was acting. It's oh, were you acting, <laughs> were you? Okay. You were acting. Uh, look, this is, uh, I think this is, it's, it's 60 odd bucks, I think, $65, 65, 70 quid or something like that. It's expensive. It's an expensive trick for what it is, which is two decks of cards. You saw the performance. If you want to achieve that trick, then it's worth getting. The information that the Christian gives you on forces alone. The polarity principle is brilliant. There's so many more ways that you can go with the polarity principle. That's genius. There's lots of really, really good. He, he teaches his, uh, uh, his version of the Hofsinger spread cup force uh, called the Hofsinger handout, which is brilliant. <laughs> but there's a lot of nice bits in here. Um, I'm not going to do this just because I've already got a card. That I, I've got a few card at any numbers that I do that I really like. I'm not going to be taking a gimmick deck of cards around with me to do something that I can achieve in different ways without actually having a gimmick deck of cards. But if you like the look of this, then go for it. Christian's a really clever guy. He, um, yeah. you know, I mean, he is. You can't take that away from yeah, Christian. He He's brilliant. Uh, Christian's a really clever guy. You know, some, some of the modern classics, in my opinion, are by Christian Grace. I think that this is, out of all of the one series, level one, Miracle One and Switch One, I think this is the weakest of the three. Uh, but I still think it's, you know, 
stronger than a lot of stuff that comes out there. And as with Vanishing yeah. Ink, the tutorials are really good and so on and so forth. I'm going to give it 79%, which is the highest mark I can give something if I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to give it 79%. I fully expect you to give it a lower mark, uh, but I'm giving it 79%. I'm going to give it 55. 55%. Okay. So 55% from Ryland. It's over half. It's over half. It's, it's over, over half. 55% from Ryland, 79% from me. It's good. It's, it's good. It's, Ryland thinks it's okay. I think it's good. Um, it's just not something I would do. Yeah. Okay, so next up we have The Vending Machine by yes. George Iglesias and Twister Magic. Ryland's very excited about this one. Uh, what uh, Twister Magic have been doing recently is they have been bringing out classics of magic and they have been bringing it rang up to date as kind of a flat pack thing. So that thing that you do with the Lego that's up there, yeah. um, that is uh, obviously Twister Magic. This is also Twister Magic. And what it says, packs flat, plays big in your shows. Um, and that's very true. Re really really is it's uh twister magic's version of the squared circle which is a classic of magic um that's been around since uh you know for a long long time for many years in my show i used to do the creative magic paint paint uh can uh to make loads of silks appear the um squared circle is a brilliant way of actually uh doing some really cool magic tricks Let's have a look at a performance of Ryland doing this vending machine so you can see what it looks like and then we'll talk about the pros and cons. Okay, so this is the magic vending machine. You've probably never seen inside a vending machine before, but this is what is inside. This is the actual vending machine. That's the outside of the vending machine. Inside, this is the inside of the vending machine. You can see there's nothing in there. We've got the inside and we've also got this part here. That's the inside. As I said, there's nothing else inside, as you can see. Put that back on there, like that. Now, here we've got a couple of different things. As you can see, loads and loads and loads of different stuff. Yeah, load like water. You get the idea. Loads of different things. Dad, I want you to just say stop when you come around. Anytime. Yeah, anytime. Stop. There. Yeah. So put them over there. Now we're going to deal this into three piles. There. Okay. So what we have is we've got Snickers. I like Snickers. Sprite. We'll go for a bottle instead. We'll go for a bottle of Sprite. Now I don't actually like ready salted Pringles. So what we'll do is we'll go for sour, sour cream and onion. Sour cream and onion. So we've got Snickers, Sprite, and Pringles. Okay, so I have my magic credit card here. Magic credit card. Beep. Now I want, let's go for the Snickers first. Snickers. Do it again. Beep. We've got this. Sprite. And beep. Pringles as well. What? So that was a great performance, right? And this, for me, would be perfect in a kids or a family show. Yeah. This is the perfect kids trick. I was thinking what you could do, you know, like when you do a kids party, a lot of the time you're going to do party games and you're going to, give, you're going to give away prizes. Yeah. This would be a great thing to do at the beginning of the magic show and saying later on, I'm going to do some uh, games. Who likes playing games? Oh, brilliant. Um, who likes to win prizes? Oh, you do. Well, I'm going to give away some prizes. Um, now, the problem is I forgot to bring the prizes with me, but I've got a magic vending machine here. <laughs> Perhaps you guys could help me make the prizes. And then you could have a little bowl. You could make like loads and loads of little bags of Haribo up here or something. Bags put, of Haribo and yeah. M&M's Twix. You could put them into the, uh, into the bowl and then there's your prizes for later on in the show. Oh, and that would make a great opener for a kid's show. Because kids know what vending machines are. Magic vending machines is cool. Making sweets appear is cool. The way that Ryland did it is with the cards and he did a little force in order to force his three favourite things. But... 
to be honest with you, you I'd, I wouldn't even use a force. I wouldn't. I'd just say, hey, who wants to win some prizes? Okay, who likes Haribo? Let's start with some Haribo. This is voice activated. Everybody, if you shout Haribo, it'll it'll voice activate. Haribo! Oh, it hasn't worked. Oh, I haven't paid for it. Can you come up and help me? This is my credit card. I want you to take the credit card, wave it in front. Everybody, when he waves it in front, everyone shout beep. Brilliant. Oh, we got Haribo! What other prizes should we have? Who Shout out some prizes. Who said a Twix? Right, everyone, shout Twix. Oh, you need to wave the card. I think this would be a brilliant opener yeah or you can do it every time um you say look we've got some cards we've got three cards here pick one of these cards okay you want this take the credit card swipe everyone say beep and then so what did you want and then take go in take it out and you go here you love go. it and then you can do that every time so wants a prize I love it. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Imagine that you're doing the show and halfway through the show, you go, oh, I'm getting thirsty. I need a drink. Beep. Here's a Coke. <laughs> you know, make a hamburger appear. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I think this is great. It packs flat, goes into your case. Yeah, it's made out of... Flat max. Yeah. It's made out of cardboard, but it's made out of like really durable, high quality cardboard. As long as you yeah. pack it flat at the end of the show, it will last a very, very long time. It's brilliant. It, uh, the tutorial is great. It goes through everything with a fine tooth comb. It's completely self-working. It's a fantastic trick. It's my favorite Twister Magic trick I think that's ever come out. I love uh, this. Probably the funniest. Yeah, I'm definitely the funniest. I think this is going to find its way into a lot of kids' performers and family performers' shows. I think it's modern, it's up to date, it's current. I'm going to put it in my kids' show. You're going to put it in your kids' show? Yeah. I think you should. I think it's great. And then you got you can have a snicker every time you perform as well. There you go. It's a win for you. I'm going to give this 100%. What about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do at the end of the show, after I've got about all the Harry Potter, but I'm going to put a Mac, McDonald's, a burger and a Mac, uh, milkshake at the bottom for McDonald's and, uh, and some chips. And then I'm going to have the prizes on top. I'm going to do the prize thing. And at the end of the show, oh, swipe, swipe, swipe. Burger, milkshake, chips. Oh, one last thing, beet ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, 100% for me. What about you? 100% for me. 100%. 119. 119%. This is incredible. I love it. You can get it from all good magic dealers. This is one of the best kids' trop props to come out this year. Yeah. Okay, so next up we have Multi Monty Jumbo uh, by Juan Pablo Magic. And we've reviewed a few Juan Pablo things in the past. Uh, some of the stuff has been good. Some of the stuff has been not so good. I've got to be honest, when this came in for review, I didn't think I was going to be impressed. Watch the tutorial. Uh, follow along with him. I am impressed. This is actually a really good trick. You can yeah. get two versions. Yeah. You can get a, a kind of a jumbo version, which you're about to see, and also a small close-up version that you can put in your pocket. Um, I'm going to do a performance of it so you can see exactly what it looks like. It's a three-phase routine. It's loosely based on Color Monty, but it's very, very different with lots of different sequences. But if you watch the performance, you can see, and then I'll tell you um, why I like it so much. I'm going to tell you about uh, the time that I got scammed by a guy in a bar. It was many, many years ago. And a guy came up to me and he had these really big cards. And he said, look, I want to play uh, cards with you. I want to play a game of chance. I was like, OK, how does the game work? And he said, well, it's very simple. I've got three cards. I've got two jokers and I've got an ace. He said, the idea is that you've got to follow the ace. If you follow the ace and you get it right, you win. If you get it wrong, you lose. And I was like, that's an easy game. I can play that. Absolutely not a problem. He said, so watch, I'm going to put the ace right there in the middle of the two jokers. And you can see it going right there in the middle of the two jokers. To win £10, all you have to do is tell me where's the ace. Remember, there's a joker on top, there's a joker on the bottom. Where's the ace? And I said, well, you can't get me. I know exactly where the ace is. The ace is in the middle. He said, are you sure? I said, yes, I'm betting £10 on it. And I was wrong. The ace was not in the middle. And the reason the ace wasn't in the middle is because the ace was right there on the bottom. I was like, hang on a minute, how is the ace right there on the bottom? That doesn't make any sense at all. I, didn't, I wasn't ready. I didn't know what was going to happen. I wasn't ready. It's not fair. And he said, look, we'll play again, but this time we'll make it a little bit easier to follow. I was like, okay. He said, look, here's what we'll do. We'll put the ace on the bottom. And I can say, I said, yes, I can see the aces on the bottom. He said, this time to win the game, all you have to do is tell me where there's a joker. That's all you have to do. Just tell me where the joker is. And if you get a joker, you'll win. Now think about this, he said. There's two jokers, there's one ace. You've got better odds this time. I was like, okay, I can't lose this. He said, where's there a joker? And I said, there is a joker on top. And he said, no, that's an ace. I was like, but I've got a second chance. So there's an ace, uh, there's a joker in the middle. He said, no, that's an ace. 
I'm like, how could there be two? How? How? How, how could there possibly be two aces? He said, uh, he said, there's not. There's two jokers and an ace. I'm like, what is going on? This makes no sense. This doesn't make any sense at all. He said, look, I'll give you one last chance. You're 20 pounds down now. I'll give you one last chance. Now, remember that there's three cards. One, two, three. Last chance. I'll show you this one. That's an ace. I'll show you this one. That's a joker. All you have to do is tell me what this one is. And if you get it right, we'll call it quits. If not, you owe me another 10. That's 30 quid. And I said, well, it's meant to be a joker, but I've seen some crazy stuff here. So it's probably an ace, but I'm going to hedge my bets. and I'm going to say it's half an ace and half a joker. And he said, well, unfortunately, you lost me 30 pounds. Unfortunately, you lost and you owe me 30 pounds. And this is your bill. 10 plus 10 plus 10. That makes 30. And I still have no idea how I was scammed. But if anybody knows, can you let me know? Okay, so my favourite part is um, when when you've done the Joker and it's like you got the Joker, you got the Ace. My favourite part is when it's like, what do you think the card is? Well, I think it's half and half. One note, you bill. That's really cool, isn't it? Yes. Well, with this, you get you get the Joker, uh, which is really well made. I mean, look at that. It's not. It's like. Yeah. Not a normal playing card. This is going to last a lifetime. It's like plastic coated. If yeah. drink falls on it, you'll be able to wipe it off. So you get the Joker, you get the Ace. Now, those are actually marked in a really clever way. I didn't realise that this was so clever. But you've got marks there and there. So that when you're spreading it out, you know exactly where to spread it to, which is really cool. And then Ryland's favourite bit with the bill. This is the finale. However, you have other finale cards that you can use as well. You see the bill, the mark, yeah? Mm, it's that line there and that line there. And it allows you to line it up in the right spot. I like that. Yeah, so it makes the trick easier. So you get a few other things. So this is the bill card that you like. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have that as a finale. If you want to, you can have this so that you end the trick with a man that's lost all of his money, which I thought was quite funny as well. You also get this. Don't know the purpose of this it's a finger pointing at you it might be you owe me money or something like that that's the finale card there and then you just get one that's completely blank and oh, that's not included in the thing so <coughs> you get lots and lots and lots of different ways of ending it depending on on which way you want to go with it so it's uh it's got lots of different options i prefer the bill one um, but there's lots of, but I also quite like the man with his pockets empty. I think that would work as well. Um, but yeah, it's good. Um, it's, it's not difficult to do. Uh, it, Juan Pablo speaks in Spanish, but there's a narrator over the top that, uh, narrates everything into English. Um, not that difficult. The cards are marked on the back, like I said, which makes it very, very easy because it means you don't need to think about everything. You know immediately that the cards are orientated the right way. And when you're spreading them out, you know immediately how far you need to spread them and you know immediately the position of the cards. So all you have to do is remember the sequences for the three phases and then you can get straight into it. And, you know, cards like this will work really well on a big table, you know, and there's no reset either. Um, the reset is uh, is immediate, so all you have to do at the end is just put the cards back into your pocket and your... I've got this the wrong way around. There we go. That's it. That's it. So, I've got this the wrong way around. What am I doing? Ah, no, it's this way. There we go. Ah, there we go. So, all I <laughs> didn't know what I was doing there, mate. So, all I have to do is... Oh, no, that's the wrong way around. There we go. So, all I have to do... Is put the cards back into my pocket and I'm reset, ready to go again. Yeah. So you can just put those back in there and you reset and you're ready to go again. So now I can go into the yeah. routine again like I did before. Um, I love this. This is going to go into my table set. I think this is great. I also think this would be a fun thing to do in a smaller stage show. Uh, I really like this. I'm going to give this 90%. What about you? Um, 79%. Not going to do it. No. Seventy-nine percent from Ryland. Fair enough. Ninety percent from me. I am going to do it. Now let's go on to what Ryland thinks is the best close-up trick that he's ever seen in his life. Better than anything he's ever had from Alakazam. Better than anything he's ever had from anywhere ever. This is Ryland's favourite trick of all time for a close-up performance. You intrigued? Let's look at the final review. Okay, so for the final review today, uh, this has been out a couple of years ago, but it's gone under everyone's radar. Uh, we have Monkey by okay. Jeff Price, who in my opinion is one of the best magicians of all time. Uh, Jeff Price and Plain Sight. Now you did the yes. pendant, we did review the pendant trick oh, a little oh, while ago. Oh, I left the house, I left. He's now got two pendants. He's got a silver pendant. I've got a, a 
and he's got a jet black one. black one. And I've also got the monkey, and I'm gonna have the and I've already, and I've got the chapstick one, which, which we're learning be, at the moment on a future which review will show. Probably be or maybe on the next or the one after that. Yeah. So what is monkey? Well, before we, we might talk... have already done it if we put it this one up um, after after yeah. that. One. We're batching a few review yeah. shows so yeah. we can have a break over Christmas. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, let's have a look at a performance of this first of all. We'll have a look at a performance of you yeah. performing it to camera, and then when we've done the performance to camera, we'll talk about what we think. Okay, so Daddy, I've got this little key here. Okay. Would it be cool if I can take? Well, you can see there's three holes in there. Yeah, yeah, I can. Three yeah. holes. What I'm going to do? Would it be cool if I could get the key ring that I've threaded on there and move it all the way to the end hole? Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Well, watch this. You can see it there. Oh, <sighs> like that. Okay. In fact, I can do it one-handed. One, two, three. Okay. You can kind of tell I'm just turning it around. Can't you, you? You're turning it around. Yeah. That's what you're doing. But the thing is, if you hold it there. Hold it. Hold it here. Yeah. Watch this. One, two, three. You can actually get it right there. In fact, you can examine that yourself. No way. Look at that. It's right there in the middle. Yeah, it is. That is insane. Now, I said that you said that this is the best close-up trick of all time. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. You it is. almost it killed really your is. sister when you showed her this. Yeah. She was like, what? No. Well, and I love... At the... first, she was like, oh, it's another magic trick. And I'm, and I'm like, yeah, but this one's really good. It's, prob it's probably my favourite magic trick. And she was like... Okay, and at the end she's like... And she thought this bit was so rubbish, wasn't she? When you were just yeah. turning it around. She's like, this is the best trick of all time. And then when it just went there, and she spent like an hour trying to look at it and going, no! Doesn't make any sense. Um, you get a few bits with this. So yeah, first so of all, you, you get... You get the normal key. First of all, you get the normal key. This is a regular key. That is a regular key. And this is uh, a great size to do key manipulation. Yeah. Uh, and you said, you know the ring on here? Um, he said it's, um, I think it's titanium, I don't know. Okay. Something like that, um, so it won't, it's not magnetic, and it won't stick to the magnet when you're trying to do it, so it makes a reset, <coughs> so it's a non-magnetic ring. Okay, so a non-magnetic ring, this is the gimmicked key, we're not going to talk about why yeah. it's gimmicked, or how it's gimmicked, yeah. but it's gimmicked to do the trick you just this saw. This is how you reset it, I'm not going to say how you reset it, but this is how you reset it. So, I do, I do want to talk about this, because you get a magnet. Yeah, and this is a two. re you get a couple of magnets they come apart like this right yeah so what he said you do is um so you you get your magnets well i'm not going to say but you're going to get your magnets you're going to do the four things that you need to do to test this on this side that side this on that side and that side now i use this one on this side because i think it's easier now he said how don't you know, don't talk about I'm not, how to reset it but how you know which side is which that side i'll just show you that side has got a little thing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that side hasn't. Got ya. So that's like a line down to the bottom. That side hasn't. That's normal. <coughs> so this side here, if I can get this on camera. Yeah, there. That side there. That's got like, um, uh, that, that side's been like trimmed like a normal key. And then this side hasn't. Like yeah. That. Get it. But what I like about this, come back here. What I like about the thing that you use to reset it is it's designed it's really to be a, it's designed to be a keychain as well. Yeah, yeah. So you just hang that on your keychain along with yeah, this. Hang, yeah. And you well, and you've you're got, not going to use. You take the magnet off. So you hang that on your keychain. Whenever you want to use your magnet, you just take that part off and then reset it. And then and you, put it back together. And then you put that back on your keychain. It's perfect. That's it's absolutely brilliant. Really cool. It's it's about uh, when I yeah. was watching the tutorial, I was like, man, this is going to be a long reset. Yeah, this is. It's not. It's not. Go really close to the camera. Show them the bit where it goes into the middle because that looks yeah. sick. Boom. I that's now fully that examinable, hand. isn't it? That's. Uh, yeah, you got that. That's yeah. like really examinable because you can't. Yeah, that's examinable. Now that come back here else. and go over there and reset it so you can see just no, not not on camera. Go off. Okay, no, so, go off camera. Go off yeah, camera. Normal. No just so you can see how fast the reset so, is. That's really quick. That's ridiculous. Then you can do it again. Yeah. So you can put it onto your keychain and you're good to go. This, for me, is the ultimate everyday carry. This is right there with Keymaster. Yeah. Like, yeah. his keychain <laughs> is insane. He's got Keymaster on there. He's got, uh, yes. he's, got, he's got that on there. He's got a Pro Mystic uh, Rubik's Cube thing on there. He's got uh, Ignition on there. He's got um, a couple of other bits as well that I can't remember. Oh, a Rubik's Cube that you got from Kev G and Colin Klaus for a prediction for a Rubik's Cube trick. 
Like yeah. your, your his keychain is insane. It's insane. So much really good stuff on there. Mm -hmm. um, and this is an incredible trip. This is pretty much, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best EDC items you're ever going to see. It's there on your keychain. When you want to use it, you can use it. When you don't want to use it, you don't have to use it. It's there, ready and waiting. It's good enough to do in a gig. You're going to do this in every gig. I know you are. Yeah. It's good yeah. enough to do in any gig. But also, you know, if you're ever out and about and somebody says, hey, show me a trick, you can just say, okay, well, let me show you something with my key. Look at this. Lots of different ways to present it. But I love this kind of really naff thing where it's... <laughs> just really rubbish and then all of a sudden it's like boom and it's like what just happened this is killer i'm gonna yeah. give this 150 percent um... go on what were you gonna say because watching you go mm, it's a bit boring uh... <coughs> So, Ryan's just thinking about what to tell you about Monkey. What I will tell you is that Jeff Price is a genius. And if you haven't gone and checked out Plain Sight Magic, please do so. <laughs> this is a trick like... that you can only buy from Plain Sight. Oh, I remember. Go on. Um, oh, <laughs> what you do is, um, you said you spend about an hour in front of the TV. I don't know what that was. That was wind outside. That it's was very windy. the chair thing smashing against the cable. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Go on. Probably gonna break now. Um, so we got this. Um, he says spending about an hour in front of your TV, just well watching something, just like going back and forth with the magnet, just going that that that. Because at first it's kind of stiff to get like um, from the middle to there. It's kind of stiff to go like that. But if you spend about an hour in front of the TV, which I did, just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, it will start to do it. And then as and then once you've done that, it will like. Does it first try? It used to be like um, a pull. It wouldn't work. Pull, pull, pull. Then you okay. do it. But if you spend, if you do spend now in front of the, in front of the TV, it will but get a bit looser, which means it's able to like do it straight away. Brilliant. So what are you giving it? I'm giving it 150 percent. Billion. A billion percent. A billion percent. No, infinity. <gasps> infinity percent. Plus one. Infinity percent plus one. Times. No, infinity plus in, no infinity times infinity times infinity plus infinity. <laughs> Hang on. Good luck, Michael, putting this at the bottom of the screen. Infinity times infinity times infinity plus infinity. He loves this. This is a great trick. You can get it directly from Plain Sight Magic. That's the only place you can get it. Good luck getting it. It's out of stock all the time. Jeff can't make them fast enough. And if you see him at a convention, you might have some. But go over to that booth first because there's a very good chance that halfway through the first day, they're going to be gone. Uh, it's one of the best tricks you'll ever see. It's called Monkey. It's by Jeff Price. Jeff, you are a genius. We need to do this. Yeah. Jeff, genius. Genius. Jeff Price. The genius that is Jeff Price. That's another review show in the back. That's another review show in the back. There's another review show in the bag. It is another review show in the bag. Thanks once again for joining us right here on Magic TV. Yes. We'll see you again soon. Don't forget, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yes. Um, and uh, I hope Santa's brought you everything that you wanted this year. Yeah. We'll be back again uh, next week with another review show. We don't miss a week. In fact, next week's review show is a review show special. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take a close look at one of Ryland's shows. And we're going to be uh, reviewing his show. We're going to get live performances. I still haven't done yours. I know. We're going to do a full live performances of all of Ryland's tricks that he does in his show. And then review them. So a lot of people have been asking for that. We're going to do that. And uh, we'll be back again with another review show the week after the week we just don't stop here at magic tv and there's going to be a load of content coming up over christmas as well but once again thank you very much for joining us thank you for supporting the channel through 2022 uh we really appreciate it don't we yeah my name's craig my name's Ryland. we'll see you again next week right here on magic tv bye, bye everyone bye.